Dino has been a, an epic game that will remain in history. San Fufan! San Gigi! San Gigi is keeping us alive! Marcelli! Marcelli! Vamos, Spanita! Hombre del partito! Ti parla con il cucchiaio! Ti parla, Cenco! Alla fine Forza You bet Oh wait Wait, wait. Ciao Juventini of the world. I hope you are all doing well. I was expecting another life today. I was expecting today to celebrate together with you the second signing of the summer because we don't have to forget Caio Jorge, 19 years old, for nothing. I was expecting to speak about Locatelli, full life about Locatelli. We already did yesterday. We were a bit too much in a hurry, too much taken by the emotions. We wanted him so, for so long and we were thinking that this was the night of Locatelli. Not today, not today. I made a really long video about it, 10 minutes video about it. I hope you checked it. If not, it is still there. You can go and you can check. I hope you are doing well, my friend, because we will speak a bit about Locatelli, but I don't want to be repetitive. We already said so many things, but I want to explain you why today there was no official announcement and no official agreement, because you have questions. I know that. I know you have a lot of questions. I know that you want to know what has been said in that meeting and I have the answers. I have the answers for your question and then I want to speak about Massimiliano Allegri because today, I don't know if you saw it or not, we already spoke in a video of four minutes about the game of tomorrow, Juventus Atalanta, in our stadiums with our supporters, the game before Udinese Juventus. But first of all, Let's see if some people know my collection of shirts, if they already know who I put on the back of the shirts, who is following the channel since long time and they know since 2019 who is in the back of this shirt. Special shout out today for the one that is able 
to guess who's there on the back of this shirt. And maybe we will have also a surprise, a surprise guest that at a certain moment, I don't know when, will pop in and will give us a bit of ideas, a bit of sensations about him. I'm waiting to see who guess who's on the back, but I want to say hello to a great guy of the chat. There are a lot of great guys today, yeah? But a shout out to Elvin de France, Juve fan Info France, Grande Pepe Chiellini Day. Grande Pepe Chiellini Day, because it's the birthday of Giorgio Chiellini. Two days ago it was the birthday of Allegri and Pessotto. Yesterday the birthday of Matthias de Ligt and Arthur. Today it's the birthday of, Mas uh, of Giorgio Chiellini. Number three on the shirt, Chiellini. Who was the first one who guessed it? Let me check. We have Jay Tarik who said Chiellini. Sandro de Jong said Chiellini. MD Shadab said Chiellini. Robin van der Voort said Chiellini. Absolutely. Absolutely. This Chiellini, the number three on the shirt because it's his birthday. Uh, it's true that this shirt, actually, I don't put it a lot. Why? I don't know because actually it's why. Now that I'm seeing the shirt, it's actually a beautiful shirt. Huh? It's a beautiful shirt. I didn't remember because it was not welcomed really well, that shirt. People were actually complaining about the shirt. It's not beautiful. Where are the lines and so on? But now that I have it on me, after actually two years of the launch of the shirt, I have to say it's a really beautiful shirt. Look, it's a beautiful shirt. I don't know. It's a beautiful shirt. I like I like the shirt. I really like the shirt. And especially because it's Kellini on. I, rem I, 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 don't, I don't know if you know the story about that shirt because I spoke with uh, um, the designer of Adidas and she explained to me also the message behind that shirt was that if we have one shirt next to someone else who's wearing the shirt next to someone else who's wearing the shirt, at the end, we are the stripes. It's not actually the stripes on the line, but if you put actually the, the one next to him and next to him, it actually forms a stripe. Uh, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black. Beautiful message. I like, I like. Beautiful one. Uh, people are saying the logo is not beautiful. Uh, Tony is saying the logo is not beautiful. Uh, the back is not beautiful. I agree with Sandra. The back is not beautiful uh, because they had to invent something because they couldn't actually do a part in white white apart in black they had to invent something it was not really beautiful i agree with uh, sandro uh aldo said i also loved this shirt i was not big fan when it came out and today yes today yes uh, ciao to udandrea 21 che dice he's saying lord bernardeschi no i don't own a shirt of uh, lord bernardeschi i have a picture with a shirt of uh, bernardeschi on it was in the fitting rooms in the locker rooms and then ho uh, luckily i woke up and i said no 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 I will not take the shirt of uh, Locatelli. Ciao, Miss Tondelli. Always representing the feminine part of the chat. Be kind. Always be kind with Miss Tondelli. Uh, because that's really important. Be kind with everyone, but especially with uh, Miss Tondelli. Ciao, Rob. Uh, RB comes. Who's there since... Uh, so many times, so many times. Ciao, Rob. So, what do we start with? With the words of Allegri or with the situation Locatelli? Something that... it happened today that I have the answers why and I want to explain you and we are waiting for our special guest huh? uh, when the guest is there I hope that I can see the message so that I can invite him uh, let me check if I can already send the guest the link so that when he wants to he can join wait huh? uh, I will already copy the link so I can invite him uh, that would be really really beautiful I don't know if you already guessed who uh, will come today with us. It's not difficult to know. A great friend of the channel today. Uh, maybe he has some time. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Let me check if I can send him already. The I'm not prepared, guys. I'm sorry. Huh? Here we are. Here we are. I sent him the link. So that when he wants to, he can join. El Tactico. Thomas is saying El Tactico. It's Mo, Mo the Goat. Probably, yes. Probably it's Mo. Probably the friend of Cherubini. Because uh, actually the picture that we made for the cover of Cherubini became a meme today. That was really funny. That was really funny that it became a meme. It was super funny, to be honest. Uh, so, um, 
people are asking when is only fans coming not not immediately uh ber bernatastico i have to be uh, uh to actually be aware and used to the new name that you are putting the new nickname bernatastico uh, i'm curious about the new season of bernardeschi didn't start really well but uh, let's see let's see what will happen okay so uh we start with a poll guys let me take my computer we will do a poll uh just to be sure what you want because you know that most of the time you are the one that decides what we start speaking about so let me do the first poll guys and meanwhile you can see my side the side of my face so we start starting discussion Locatelli, why, or Allegri uh, words for the game of tomorrow. Uh, what happened meantime, in the meanwhile, Tony Spontano just uh, helped and uh, made a first donation to the channel. Thank you, Tony. <claps> thank you, Tony. And also, thank you. And, uh, and uh, I'm sure that you are already in our telegram chat thank you tony really nice thank you really appreciate it so let me see guys what you are deciding today uh it started oh it's quite quite balanced huh? with the uh, 48 votes we have 56 percent are saying locatelli why or 60 percent and 40 percent the allegri words we'll speak about both huh? uh but uh, i'm curious to see you let's wait that we reach at least 100 uh no 100 is maybe too much uh, because we are still at the start of the life let's wait that we reach uh, 75 votes to be sure that what we start talking about Buonasera, Jay. Uh, subscribe to the Gigi's Juve channel if this is not done yet. He is the good Grand Elvin. And if you speak French, go to his channel because he is really the goat. And if you have Twitter, follow Juve Fan Info France and you can always click the translation button because he is always listening firsthand to the information about Juve and translating them really well. Apparently, we have <laughs> we have Colo 99. Guys, guys, I have something to show you. Uh, about Colo, it arrived yesterday in the box, in the mailbox, mamma mia, mamma mia, I know this was the dream of all of us, it didn't happen, mamma mia, this is made by Colo, the artist, the artist, you know, uh, you know guys, when I see this kind of, uh, of art, I'm jealous, because I want also for the channel these kind of uh, uh, posters. Look at that, the Ballon d'Or 2021 is there with the cup. It's beautiful, huh? it's really, really beautiful. Uh, made by Colo and uh, produced by Turin Giants, the great friends of the channels, guys. Beautiful ones, I love that. I don't know if they are still in stock on turingiants.com. If not, go there because it's really great. And uh, it's true that sometimes I look a bit like Higuain, uh, especially now that he copied my style. Huh? So what are you want to speak about? 56% want to start, start speaking about Locatelli. Why? Why Locatelli? So I will explain. I will explain. So Locatelli, we were all waiting for him today. In the beginning, they said in the morning we will meet. Then the morning became the afternoon because we know in Italy we are not in a hurry. We are not really um in a rush why rushing because you know you we wake up we take a, a il ristretto the small coffee there is not only one sport paper to read there are three big sport papers gazzetta dello sport tutto sport corriere dello sport do you know how long it takes to read the three papers and then you have to read also the other papers la stampa uh, il corriere uh, not the corriere dello sport the other corriere then you have so many papers la repubblica and so on and so on you have to read all of them it's a lot it's a lot it's a really lot it's taking a lot so your morning is already taken to read the papers after the papers uh, after the papers guys we have also other things to do uh, we have to drive drive from Reggio Emilia to Torino so it was postponed after the lunch 2 30 they didn't do it in La Cantinassa they did it in a secret place okay until there everything is okay we are okay with that we were expecting an announcement after 6 p.m because you know uh shareholders we have to wait uh, uh for uh, la bourse uh for the trademark uh, to be closed and then we could announce but 
they didn't announce Locatelli. Why? It's quite simple, eh? because I saw so many fake stories or people that didn't understand. Juventus and Sassuolo, they agreed on every single thing. And that's a great news. That's a great news. We agreed on every single detail. We agreed about the price. We agreed about the formula, eh? because he will come on loan. <laughs> I'm sorry, it will come on loan and Sassuolo agreed. So actually Sassuolo accepted everything from our proposal. Is this not amazing? This is amazing because this is what we were all waiting for. It's over with Juventus that has to negotiate to speak, blah, blah, blah. Uh, wait, uh, before, first I want to say thank you to Tony. Grazie Tony, who's saying I want to say love you from Pola, po Polonia. I'm watching you every time I can. Um, I am with Juve since 95, 96. Lucky you because you also watch the Champions League uh, trophy. Uh, and it will never change. Forza Juve. Grande Tony. I'm happy that I'm not the only one that watched uh, the last time that we won the Champions League 95, 96. What a trophy. What a moment. Tony, I'm happy to discover you and I'm super happy to welcome you on the channel and to discuss with you. Grande, grande Tony. Thank you for the donation, buddy. So... Speaking and explaining about uh, Locatelli, like our brother uh, from the other team, Inter, Uncle Sharma is saying, again, Locatelli, day is tomorrow. Uh, I know the frustration is there. But today we agreed on every single detail, the, the formula. So it will be a loan. It will be an obligation to buy. It's not an option to buy. It's an obligation. First, Juventus wanted two years because we have Chiesa to pay at the end of this year. Don't forget that we still have 50 million to pay for Chiesa because you remember we said 40 plus 10 plus 10. We already paid 10, so we have to do a 40 plus 10. We agreed everything. One year, the value, 32 plus some bonuses. Now there is one thing that is blocking it. Is it a big block? No, but it's an important block, okay? It's that Juventus said, we want the obligation to buy only if we reach qualification in Champions League. That Juventus will not reach the Champions League, it's crazy. It, it will not happen. Last year it was really dangerous, okay? But the chances for Juve to be out of Champions League with the team we have is really strange, okay? What are the reasons why Juventus could be out of Champions League? Could be a ban from Seferin, but at the moment he cannot do anything. So Sassuolo is not 100% sure. They are a bit scared. But this is not why they said no. And I explain, it's purely financial. If Juventus, if Juventus says we give you an obligate, we ask for an obligation to buy, Sassuolo can already put the money virtually, virtually, in their financial book, okay? Because that money is 100% sure. Virtually, technically, and also concrete money. Because it's an obligation to buy, okay? Juventus says we can't because we have to pay attention to our books. So we have to put the Champions League qualification clause. So if we reach it, what we will do, because we are sure to reach Champions League, in that case, it's an obligation. Otherwise, we find another way. Sassuolo can't say yes at the moment. Because if they accept, that means that that money, financially, Sassuolo cannot put it in their books. They cannot, because financially, it's numbers. It's black or white. It's one or zero. You can't say to finance, yes, but Juventus will qualify. Yes, but I promise you. But yeah, but trust Juventus. Trust Agnelli, trust Cherubini, trust Arriva Bene. Finance doesn't care about trust. It's purely numbers. Whoever you are in the world, it is numbers. Facts. Obligation to buy is a fact. Obligation to buy if you reach Champions League is not a fact. It's a maybe. 
even if the percentage is really slow and low. And that's why when they are doing forecast meetings, forecast, what does that mean? It's a meeting, not with Juventus, but internally, every company, football or not, they are doing forecast meeting. Forecast is already thinking about the future, okay? How many do we have in entries? How many can we spend? Are we doing okay or are we not doing okay? If it's an obligation to buy, you can already forecast that you have these 32, 35 millions in your books and you can sell or not sell financially. If it's linked to a qualification, you will have to wait until the end of the season before taking that money into uh, consideration for buying or selling or investing in other things. And this is the problem today. Why? Because I saw a lot of people angry with Sassuolo, angry with Juventus. Ciao Alessio, benvenuto, welcome to the channel. And this is why I'm saying pay attention to the rumors or to judge really fast because it's purely financial. And at the end, we are not dealing now on the field. It's not 11 men of Juventus versus 11 men of Sassuolo. It is companies that are dealing with million, million euro. It's a lot of money, guys. Huh? You Sometimes we don't really realize, but it's a lot of money we are speaking about, a lot of money. <laughs> And that's why a club like Sassuolo, they need some guarantees to plan their future if they want to go into negotiation and so on and so on. And that's why they cannot accept it uh, at the moment. If they accept, because there is a possibility that they accept, that will mean that actually for one year, Sassuolo will have to do like that money is not there. It's not their money. And they will have to forget about that money until the year after and that will mean actually that Sassuolo made a big sacrifice because they will have actually zero money for Locatelli virtually because then at the end it will come to Juve. This is actually the only real explanation of why today Sassuolo and Juventus didn't find a total agreement with an announcement of the players. This is it. Uh, Uncle Sharma is saying the deal sounds similar to the deal Inter are trying with Cagliari for Nahita Nandes. But I'm not 100% uh, aware of all the details of what Inter, of course, because we are a Juve channel, we have already so many things to take. Uh, you see, we are not even speaking about uh, uh, Tony Kroos or uh, whatever player, Holland, Mbappé, Messi, every day a new player. We are talking about financial books with Sassuolo. Can you imagine how much in detail? But uh, indeed, uh, uh, it, it, ma it makes sense because we know that Inter, Juve, Milan, Serie A clubs, but also Bundesliga clubs, uh, La Liga clubs, they have a really financial problems and they cannot spend this summer. So we also, when you are now content creator, YouTuber, Twitch uh, host, you, you have to also to have a, a financial degree at the end because you have to understand what's happening to be able to explain it to the people. But that's the only reason why these kind of meetings are looking that they are taking an eternity and they are taking an eternity because we are on the player not only since last week but we are on the player since already two years now a bit shiny in the beginning uh, a bit more concrete last year and full power this year and especially if we know that we don't have more than Locatelli as real targets uh, it start to be complicated huh? uh, I agree we have Mo on the channel Mo I already sent you oh I didn't even see. Wait, wait, wait. I was about to say to Mo, Mo, uh, when you want to join, you join. But actually, Mo is already here. Look at that. Ciao, Mo. Ciao. Ciao, Giuseppe. Ciao, everyone. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Look at that. I'm, tr I'm trying my setup also with uh, with uh, two people. So we have uh, me at that side. You are there. Oh, like, look at that. You are looking good and fresh. Yeah, yeah, I shaved. <laughs> That's why. Look at that. We have Mohamed who's saying this clause is strange for Juve. Are they sending messages to all the other clubs? Juve won't pay big money easily in the future. Mo, you want to uh, answer uh, Mohamed about uh, the message? Is Juventus sending a message to the other clubs with not agreeing immediately with Sassuolo? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, normally, uh, you know, something like Locatelli it should have been done like back in June, early July. You know, you close it and you're done with it. You know, like as soon as the player is back from vacation, he should have been wearing already the Juventus uh, shirt. But no, that's it. It's not going to be uh, free gifts anymore. Uh, we got screwed many times because of that. We need to watch out. Uh, you know, like we need to put clauses. This is what's happening with Felix Correa. You know, we're sending him, but we have still the right to buy him back. So these are important things that uh, we're adding this season. You 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 saw the reaction yesterday um, <coughs> to Felix Correa news, where people were thinking uh, that we were sending him uh, with uh, an option to buy for uh, Parma without actually we keeping the control of the player uh, so people sometimes are really overreacting immediately uh, so I'm happy actually that today the truth was announced about Felix Correa uh, I have a immediately and thank you Mohamed uh, for the donation that's really kind from you I have so many messages from you Mo uh, people are saying Mo ciao Mo like James at the party Will Chan uh, Liam is there uh, Sandro is asking is that Zadza uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stavros is there but uh, my question is about uh, the young guys before entering in Locatelli if you already watched a bit uh, but uh, the young guys well, we are speaking now about a few loanies like uh, Felix Correa because uh, yeah, we, we loaned him out uh, out of my mind who else did we loan out uh, um, I don't know if uh, uh, did we loan down significant other players? I don't know by heart, but we are speaking about Fagioli, maybe Ranocchia, uh, Dragozin, but he will remain normally at Juve. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your idea about uh, the loanist now from our actually Serie A C team, the third division, to second division uh, teams? Uh, no, it's great. Uh, for me, they need that experience. The higher they go in the division, the better they're going to become and the more they're going to be exposed to, you know, professional players. Because remember, like, you're playing against clubs that could go to Serie A next season, you know. So, like, there is some experience there. It's not like, uh, you know, Serie C, this is where it's still not very professional, right? Uh, Serie B is different. We, we, I watch all the games there. <laughs> people, they remind me, eh? Rafia, but also Dauda Peters. Now I remember uh, they are going to Standard de Liège. The, actually, it's a club uh, in Belgium, uh, a friendly club of Juve, because in the past we already did a lot. So, you know, the, the, these are the kinds of satellite teams that Juventus has. That means that it's not the owner of Standard de Liège, but it's a really uh, great friendship. Uh, so now, uh, indeed, uh, Yatin is saying uh, Rafia, Frabotta, Peters. Uh, Felix Correa, but Frabotta, I believe it's more like uh, um, one that didn't convince uh, uh, at Juventus last season. He did a really great game versus Sampdoria. If I remember well, a great game versus Milan, and probably that's it. Uh, so uh, uh, watch out for Pellegrini. Uh, he could be sent on loan again. Yeah because he didn't convince as well and uh, uh but do you think or are you actually more from the idea mo that we had to keep them over players like i will i will give you the roles huh? uh uh ranocchia and fagioli over uh ramsey and uh bentancur uh, draguzin over um uh, rugani do you think that they they needed to stay in Serie A in the first team over the other players no, they need playing time. You need them to run and not play like five minutes every 10 games. That's that's not good enough for them. They're not going to progress. Okay, it's true. They're training with the first team. So, for example, uh, if Ranocchia stays with the under-23, he could always, for some games, uh, you know, be called up with the first team. So this is, this is important. Otherwise, sending them on loan is... Uh, to Parma and these kind of clubs is really uh, good for them to for their, pro you know, progression. And also, we, we can't keep everyone. Mm. We have to choose uh, the players that fit the project. Hey, if we have to make sacrifices. We have to make sacrifices. Mo, did you change your microphone? Uh, no, I changed my laptop. Ah, it's good now. <laughs> 
It's really good. Oh, that will be a really great uh, season. Even the sound is is much better, much yeah. better. Oh, that's Just a good the new laptop. That's a new laptop. I love it. Uh, that we have a question from Alan. Grazie, Alan, for the donation. Who's saying it's a good question, by the way. What if a player go on loan with an option to buy, and the club decided to activate the buy? Can the player refuse to sign the, them uh, permanently, like Demiral? Uh, you want to answer more or uh, I go? Go ahead. So, uh, no. The player at that moment, he already signs a contract with the new team. He's on loan, but he's a, already actually property of that new team because they have the right to uh, buy him. So, actually, Demiral is virtually already an Atalanta player. It's the club that will own already. Then if they if the club says no, he goes back to Juventus uh, easily. But the player already agreed to join them and uh, he cannot say no anymore. Uh, but really great question about that. Uh, I know that you don't have that much time, Amo. So uh, when you have to leave, you tell me and you leave. But uh, yesterday... Let me, I... uh, let me interrupt you one second. Uh, sure. This is a funny thing. Have you seen the post by Juventus for Chiellini? Not yet. Okay, now? Check it on Twitter. Yeah. Wait. I mean, it was out about 15 minutes ago. Let me go. Uh, the English oh, one. Oh, shit. Wait. Huh? Uh, so I, I have to set it up because, you know, that I for one time I'm not even ready. Huh? So let me go and uh, uh, check it. I will have to put it here on... Uh, here we go. So you said on the Twitter English. Yes. What am I? I'm writing Twitter, obviously. Juventus uh, FC. Here we go with Kellini. You you mean about this one, Mo? Uh, happy birthday, uh, Kellini. Yes. Click on the link. Okay. Then we go to the site. Then we see. Oh. Ooh. It's Happy birthday, Captain. From January 28, 2015. Oh. That's a mistake. Yeah. Let, let, let me send it to someone. Wait. Yes. <laughs> okay. Grande Mo, thank you for uh, the news. So I, I let you I, I let you give your impression to uh, Locatelli. Meanwhile, I will send that message to someone. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Yes, for me, Locatelli is bringing something fresh that we needed, which is providing vertical passes, uh, infiltrating that box. We have McKenny that can do that, but we need also another option. And Locatelli can do that. We've seen it in the Euros. We've seen it with uh, Sassuolo many times. And he's also good with long passes. I've seen a lot of good long passes from Locatelli. So he's going to bring uh, something new to this aging midfield, uh, you know, or sometimes clueless midfield. We need that. Uh, is it enough? I would agree with uh, Giuseppe. He always said we still need something more, something bigger. But for this season, I think that's the best we could get. Uh, are we going to get someone else? Most likely not. I'm going to try and check your messages. Uh, let me see. I don't have control, guys, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> so if you have any questions, let me know. I'm back, Mo. I'm back. Okay, perfect. So uh, people, are, people are happy. Huh? They are saying good to have you back, Mo. Uh, Locatelli coming uh, into play a uh, Fabinho type of role. And I think it's a great mm -hmm. question. I don't know about Fabinho or not, but uh, I don't know if you are yet or how much you are already prepared about Locatelli. Did you already do some research or what you know about him? Uh, uh, I, did, I did a bit of research. Uh, enough? No, I still need uh, uh, to watch more games uh all games as well games that's more important he's uh he's really smart he's calm uh you know he has the right mentality 
this is what we need in in our team uh someone like him to you know dictate the pay uh you know uh, provide key passes infiltrating this these vertical passes that we've been missing we expected artur to to provide those passes but he's injured all the time he never integrated well the team you know he's still used to the barca style uh i don't see him yet with the juve style mm. so we need to look at that too mm. now yesterday we were checking some images about him uh i think i have uh oh, i can't show them i didn't prepare it with uh two people but uh uh we saw some images of him be playing vertical and so on it was really really crazy uh, uh mm. how much he can uh, help improving juve i would not put too much pressure on him um do you think more that the fact that we are waiting so much for Locatelli, that it will put even more pressure on uh, on Manuel. For sure, the expectations are extremely high. Uh, we've been suffering so much from uh, from this midfield the last two seasons, at least. Uh, I would say since uh, Pogba and Vidal left. Um, that, you know, we're expecting anything to help solve that midfield. Mm. So, yes, the pressure is really high on him. I hope he is able to cope with that. It's not Sassuolo anymore. It's a much bigger club. If um, I have two questions, but when you have to leave, you leave, eh, Mo? Don't, uh, because I know it was uh, not planned before. So, uh, two questions, uh, one from me and one from Adi Green. I don't know which okay. one you will start with. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, Allegri, how you think he will play uh, 4-3-3 because that's what we started to see or a 4-2-2 that, uh, 4-2, sorry, that will become a 4-3-3. What do you think about the formation? That's one. And then the question of Adi, can you give us already your prediction of the four places at the end of the season? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a really tough question. I'm going to start with yours first. <laughs> uh I see uh, four three three, that's uh, for sure. The problem is we don't have a regista. Mm. Uh, Ramsey was tested there twice. He, I I was not convinced at all. I I didn't like it. He will try again tomorrow. He will try again tomorrow. What I read uh, by Luca Bianchin, if I'm if I'm pronouncing correctly, he would have the role of a playmaker. Mm. So it still would be a 4-3-3, but Ramsey would be advanced. And then you would have the two other midfielders uh, behind. So this is something new he's going to test. Is he going to play like that? I doubt it's too offensive. Mm. Probably, yes. Yeah. So um, for the other question, uh, can you give us your prediction about fourth play, the fourth play? places at the end of the season ah, sorry that's my daughter playing <laughs> uh he's, well juve first i believe as well i believe as well and uh i'm sorry we we got a desk that goes up and down so you're gonna see me going up and down as well <laughs> oh you have that oh look at that that's beautiful Yes. Is, is it the one uh, uh, mechanic that you click and you? It's electric, actually. Wow, I love yeah. that. I need one like like that as well. Yeah, yeah, it helps. Uh, you know, when you sit too much, you can work standing. So, so that's really good. Mo, if you have to leave because you have family time, go. Huh? Yeah, I'm just gonna answer this question uh, quickly and then I'm gonna leave. Uh, Inter, I think they're still going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Milan, they didn't change much. And Atalanta. Atalanta, it's it's practically the same team with Damirab. True. That's it. Great. Mo, go with your family. Uh, we see each other maybe yeah. sooner, but for sure before the Udinese game. Yes. Uh, maybe earlier with some fantasy uh, life. Thank you, Mo, for being with us. It was really nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ciao, Mo. Ciao. 
it's always a pleasure guys to have uh, more with us on the channel i love to have more uh i hope he's ready for a new season uh he is he is he already told me that he couldn't wait to be back uh but uh yeah he just came in a few a few minutes with me it's always nice i would try to have you know like these guests that uh just pop in for a for a few seconds but uh like Tarek is saying family first absolutely yes uh and to answer mohammed who is asking maybe it was two more he will speak about it but i can answer as well uh that question for me the best midfield with locatelli what i'm thinking if we play that 4-3-3 three, three, it's locatelli as a regista as a number six with i believe a rabio on the left and a mckenny on the right i believe that they are really complementary and if we have as backup a bentancourt uh, Arthur, that will be a great player this season. I have no doubt about it. Huh? Uh, a Bentancur, uh, Arthur, and then uh, I don't know if Ramsey will be uh, uh, will play a lot of games. Unfortunately, I'm uh, I'm not sure. Um, but I think that we we start having a great uh, a great okay midfield, especially with the Locatelli because they are complementary. We have a Rabiot that will be more a bit, you know, like the one that is able to go really fast with the team if we have a counter-attack on the left side. Wait, then let me close something about notifications because otherwise, uh, because it's Michael who is sending me, or in the chat is sending me all the messages. Wait, huh? On that laptop is over on my phone. I took it off as well. Uh, and here I don't know how I have to put out the notification. I will check. No worry. So I think that the Rabiot is the one that will be able really to, to go with the team if we have a counter-attack. Because he's really fast with the ball. We already saw that. But he's also the one that will remain uh, mostly in non-possession. More in defense. Being a bit the shield on the left side. The left side where we have also a Cristiano Ronaldo. And probably Cristiano Ronaldo needs a bit more protection. So that he doesn't have to drop down. When we are playing with a 4-3-3, we will probably, with the men on the right, Quadrado, Kulusevski or Chiesa, who it will be, they will drop down a bit, where we will be a 4-4-2, with actually a Rabiot that will go and help on the left side, uh, forming actually a four-man midfield. Then I see a Locatelli that will be really able to uh, play fast and vertically, giving and distributing the balls, sharing all the balls to the left or to the right, and the McKinney that will play a different role as a Rabiot, because he will not have the task to go on the right side of the field, but he will have the uh, task to actually penetrate and infiltrate the field to actually make some density in the box. That's what I really believe that can be a complementary great midfield. Then I can be wrong, guys. Huh? Uh, and now we are entering, actually, the words of Massimiliano Allegri, because Massimiliano Allegri today, he spoke uh, about the game of tomorrow and already what he saw. There was an interview with uh, Enrico Zambruno, uh, who uh, I'm actually... Uh, oh, look at that. They fixed the birthday post link on Twitter, SP. And you see, we, we fixed it, guys. We fixed it on the channel. It's crazy, yeah? It's crazy. It's crazy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thanks to Mo. Uh, on the channel live, we fixed actually the problem. Let me check if we fixed it or not this time. We fixed it. We fixed it. Guys, this is beautiful. Uh, how, many ch how many channels can fix problems of the Juventus site live? Live on the channel live. It's impossible. Guys, it is impossible. A problem, we discover it live and we fix it. Mamma mia. It's crazy, yeah. I, I sometimes I don't realize that I'm also working for Juve, uh, but uh, no, I, I'm a bit emotional. I'm a bit emotional, guys. It's true. I have to be honest. I'm a bit emotional to uh, to see this kind of uh, of thing happen. Problem with the Juve site? We fix it on GGS Juve. Mamma mia, this is amazing. Uh, but speaking about, uh, um, uh, look, I'm shy. I'm shy. Now I'm shy. I'm, I'm shy. It is what it is. Um, 
But speaking about Allegri, he did uh, with Enrico Zambruno an interview of 4 minutes, 4 minutes 30, uh, where actually he was speaking about what he saw in the first friendlies, where are we? They started speaking about Paolo Di Bala. Uh, Paolo Di Bala will be uh, together with, uh, with the team. Uh, Allegri will evaluate his um, condition. And he already tested, he already tested a three-man um, offensive lineup with Cristiano on the left, Dybala as a number nine, guys, Dybala. I don't know if he will start tomorrow or not because it will be his first friendly. But Dybala and Chiesa will be on the right side of the field. That's a beautiful trio. Eh? That's a really beautiful trio. With Morata on the bench, or probably he will start tomorrow. But the idea is that we can play totally differently with the same lineup, if you put Morata, you have one that is putting more density into the field, that is actually annoying and a bit more static, playing with his back uh, versus actually the, the goal, is taking the balls, opening spaces for Ronaldo and for Chiesa, while when you are playing with Dybala, Dybala is one that is playing actually with the eyes on the goal, he will actually have the, the, the task to play as a falso nueve, dropping a bit, dribbling the man, not too much dropping and then go. So I think it's a really, really, uh, really, really nice formation and team that we can have. Huh? I'm trusting the team this year also with the idea of football of Massimiliano Allegri. So, but uh, he said that he will try to check the condition of Dybala, how much can he play. So I'm not expecting him to start the game, but to enter in the second half. Uh, hopefully he can be ready for Udinese. If not, uh, the whole game he can play then versus Empoli. Uh, then they spoke about Federico Chiesa and uh, Allegri, he said that a great player with a lot of quality that is actually giving his best on the right side of the field. And this is a really great news for all the fans because I remember all the comments when we were doing the post-live games uh, last year when a lot of people were angry sometimes on Pirlo because Pirlo was using him on the left side of the field sometime in that atypical 3-5-2, you remember, when he was actually playing on the left uh, on the same side of Cristiano Ronaldo, Allegri said immediately today in press conference, yes, he did some great things on the left, but I really believe that Chiesa can give an offer more on the right side of the field. I think that the Chiesa can also play on the left, and we saw it with Italy this summer, uh, but, uh, but I really believe that uh, on the right side, Allegri is totally right. He understood the message, he saw the player, and he knows what he can bring us on. So let's see if Kulusevski will be the one that can help on the left side. Can be, eh? or Bernardeschi. I don't know where Kulusevski will play because we didn't see him too much. So maybe that's a question I want to ask to you guys in the poll. Uh, let me check. Can we do a poll about Kulusevski? Because I'm curious about your idea about Kulusevski. So Kulusevski new role will it be on the right sub of chiesa but don't forget guys that we also have a quadrado there will it be on the left sub of cr7 will it be a big Joker with different position, or will it be actually uh, in a four, two, three, one uh, number ten? So let's check. Let's check what you think about uh, about it, guys. I've put uh, the the vote there, uh, Mohammed. Thank you for the donation, buddy. I imagine Allegri in the last two years watching Juve games and making a master plan. I am sure. I am also sure because a lot of people said he didn't evolve in two years. He took some holidays. I, he didn't went. Uh, he didn't go to another team. He didn't train another team. Uh, so he, he became a bit older and rigid with his uh, things. I don't think so. I really think that he studied a lot after six in inch initial months of uh, relax of total 
total relax and taking distance actually with football, I think that he really, really studied a lot to uh, um, to actually also react to the last year of Allegri to Juventus to some uh, uh, bad and negative comments that they had on him. Huh? So uh, um, I agree. I agree with that. What are you saying, guys? Uh, where will he play? Uh, on the right, sub of uh, Chiesa, that's where you guys see him, 38% of you. Uh, Big Joker is the second vote with a 35%. Uh, I'm, I have my big question marks about Kulusevski. I'm, I'm sure that he will play a lot of games, but I still don't know where he will play. So what did Massimiliano Allegri even said more? He said that uh, uh, it was not acceptable to concede so many goals in three games because we conceded versus Cesena in the 3-1 victory. We conceded in the 2-1 victory versus Monza. And I'm repeating you, it's a third division team and Monza is a second division team. And then we took three uh, versus Barcelona. And then I justified that it was not a problem uh, losing versus Barcelona. I had absolutely no tension for that game at all uh, because it was a friendly, because we tested something that if you don't test now, when will you test them? But it's still not acceptable to uh, actually, yeah, uh, concede, concede three goals. That's really a lot. Uh too much, too much, and we didn't score enough because we didn't even score a goal versus Barcelona. So this this can be a problem for Allegri. He was not happy, and he made it really clearly uh, all good and okay. But now these possibilities, these chances that we have, we have to uh, to finalize them because otherwise, why do we run? Why are we going there? Uh, to create all these things if at the end we are not able. He said, don't panic, no problem, because I will put it on the physical condition that was not 100% uh, perfect, and I totally agree with that, but he's already expecting some more minutes for some players in the game versus Atalanta tomorrow. Pay attention, Atalanta, uh, they didn't change a lot of players like Mo was saying a bit before, he was saying they, they just changed Demiral and Romero, that's it. They know themselves since a lot of years, they have the same trainer, uh, they already won versus Alessandria 7-1. Uh, not 3-1, not 2-1, they won 7-1, so they know how to score the guy. So tomorrow, I don't know if I expect immediately a win, uh, because we will have some tests. We are missing some players already. First game of Dybala, we miss Rabiot, we miss Arthur. Uh, we will test again a Ramsey. And then he spoke about Danilo, the intelligence of Danilo. Uh, and that's beautiful to hear because we know that uh, uh, coaches, misters, they are always looking to the team, but then they try to identify some smart and intelligent people. And he said he's that smart and intelligent that he can play as a right back or as he can play in the midfield, whatever I'm asking him to do. He's able to do that. And that shows actually that uh, Danilo made so much progress and evolution since uh, his arrival at Juve. Super happy about uh, uh, these uh, these things. Uh, but he said we want and we have to be ready versus Udinese. Grazie, Allen, who's saying I would say Allegri after a couple games he might return to his favorite formation 4 2 3 1 with Kies on the right, Kulusevski left, Cristiano Ronaldo striker, and Dybala. Uh, I love that formation Allen uh, I really love that formation and I think uh, Allegri as well is it his ideal formation I don't know because Allegri played uh, I was checking at the um, at the poll because then we will change the poll I will wait a bit uh, Allegri plays with a lot of different formation at Milan at Cagliari at Juve so I don't know actually what is his favorite formation the 4-2-3-1 worked really well at Juventus because he actually convinced the man to change position like a Mandzukic for example and uh, a funny funny anecdote if you want to know uh, Mandzukic at a certain moment uh, he had to play again as a number nine 
because of, uh, I believe, a suspension of, uh, of Higuain or uh, uh, an injury. I don't remember. He was not convinced. He didn't want to play there. He did it, but he was not really happy. So Man Allegri entered the head of Mandzukic that much that he convinced him to play on the other role that was not a role actually for Mandzukic. And uh, he did really well and he actually loved that position. But I, I'm not sure it's that position. The problem with that 4 2 3 one, we have two problems. The first one is that Cristiano Ronaldo at the moment apparently uh, is still doesn't want to... Uh, uh, he still doesn't want to, to play as a number nine. He doesn't want to. Cristiano Ronaldo is a player that if he plays like a number nine, he wants someone next to him like a Benzema in a other type of formation. Uh, but in Italy, where you have three defenders immediately on you, he doesn't like that, uh, that number nine position isolated alone in the front. Uh, because he needs some space and he don't want to do that role. A role that is actually really made for a Higuain or for a, a Morata, for example. Uh, even Morata, I'm not even 100% sure if he is really ideal for that one position. You know, uh, Lewandowski is perfect for these, uh, these uh, roles. Not a Cristiano Ronaldo in his mind, because I'm sure he could do it easily if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to. So if you miss that, uh, who do you play in the front? You can't play with a Dybala there. Uh, Caio Giorgio, guys, he's 19, he just came, so pay attention. Huh? Um, so I don't think... And then the other problem is that we have a lot of midfielder. I know that you will tell me, yeah, but they are not all at the same level. But if you play with two midfielders... Uh, if you play with two midfielder guys, uh, what does that mean? That you leave a lot of midfielders on the bench, eh? and who do you choose? So I'm not sure we will go to that 4 2 3 1 um, permanently. It can happen in, in some games, but permanently, I'm not sure. Giacomo is really happy to see the community that grow. Uh, you deserve it. Grazie, Giacomo. Grazie per il commento. Thank you for the comment. What I am really thankful for now that we are already here since one year and uh, eight months is that uh, uh, I'm proud of the fact that we can speak uh, about football, uh, that I don't need uh, to be angry to ban people, I don't know, we, we never ban actually people, or it, it, it's really rare, we have also Michael that is always there to, to, to check uh, and to help if something happened, but we created actually a, a clean space for family where uh, we try to think positive, we are able and uh, we are free to criticize uh, like uh, uh, in Greek, I can't say it, uh, but the Greek name that is saying Rugani out, uh, we can say it, why not? But uh, we don't like bullying and uh, vulgarity are not welcome on the channel. And that's what I'm really proud of, uh, of, of me, but also the people that help me and especially the community that we are a great, nice, uh, nice, nice, nice uh, community. Uh, it's perfect for the Giroud, the 4 2 3 1. Yes. Um, who do you think we will be our starting midfield against Udinese? That's a great question. We know that probably Ranocchia, Filippo, that impressed Allegri a lot, eh? uh, he will probably be there. If he goes on loan, guys, it will be an end of. Uh, end of Mercato loan after the first game, probably after the second game. Um, <laughs> but um, he will be there on the bench. I don't know if he will play, but we don't have a lot of options eh? uh, versus Udinese. Um, we have Bentancur, he will be a starter. Um, McKenny is not there. Arthur is not there. Rabio is not there. McKenny, don't forget, he is suspended. He cannot play. Um, I think Danilo will play. Danilo with Bentancur and Bernardeschi. That can be the, the starting lineup. Bernardeschi to the left. 
Danilo in the middle and uh, uh, Bentancourt to the right. Is it an ideal midfield? Absolutely not. Will we hear all the critics? Yes. Or we sign Locatelli in the next two days and Allegri decide to play him immediately, but I'm not sure. Uh, Allegri is not someone that is taking these kind of decisions uh, uh, because of. He prefers to play with the one that he already trained than uh, taking crazy decisions because, don't forget, uh, the game versus uh, Udinese is uh, really soon. It's the 22nd. We are already the 14th. So don't forget there will be Ferragosto weekend. Ferragosto weekend is really important in a lot of countries, but especially in Italy, because they are taking actually a big day off. So what was actually the result of the poll that we did? So 32% are seeing a big joker and 34% on the right sub of Chiesa. The rumors that I heard until the moment was that Quadrado will play more offensively. And this year, um, he will play more in the offensive side of the field. So I don't know. I'm really curious to see where Kulusevski will play. But one thing is sure, he will play. He will play as a super sub. Where? I don't know. I hope he will not change too much position. Because these young guys, they need to focus and to concentrate on small tasks but they need to do the small task really well you will need to stick to a formation it's two years issue thank you Mohammed. um more than a formation it's an idea of uh football it's an idea of football. Um, is that people know what to do in what situation. And that's an important concept. Uh, because you can start with a 4-2-3-1. But then you have some pressure from one side of the field. On, tip, on a, a specific roles. On our specific uh, parts of the field. Um... And then you are blocked. So players need also to be able to adapt and to change according to the moment. And I think that with a Sarri, for example, these kind of things were impossible. Sarri didn't want thinking players. Uh, he wanted players that were obsessed and maniacal in applying what he said during the week. And we saw that with a team like Napoli, it worked perfectly. Why? Because Napoli, they never won something. It's a smaller team than Juventus, of course. They believed in him. They went for it. You didn't have a lot of champion. And it worked because they, they believed blindly in what Sarri was saying, the Sarri ball. That didn't work 100% at Chelsea. Why? Because... Chelsea players were already from another caliber of the one of Napoli. Um, at Juventus, it didn't work at all. Because at Juventus, players were used of five years of Allegri where they needed to think, even if sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. They had some autonomy and the right to think where Sarri said no. And with Pirlo... Uh, Pirlo was a uh, one without experience, don't forget, he needed to try some things. Uh, and I'm sure Pirlo will become in the future a great trainer, but he needed to test. And at a certain moment, the players, they gave up. Uh, where at the end, they had a sense of fighting spirit that came back towards the end of the Serie A. Uh, but at a certain moment, with everything what happened, I believe that uh, the motivation was difficult to find. So I don't know if we will stick to a formation, but we, we, we have to work mentally before everything. That will be a really important one. Uh, ciao, Joseph. Allegri will play Ramsey as a regista with Bentancourt and Ranocchia. I don't believe uh, that that will happen. That would be really, really a big, big, big uh, bet. Uh, to play with uh, Ranocchia and Ramsey. Uh, we didn't even see them uh, playing a single second together. Eh? Um, I don't think that will happen. But then uh, Allegri can surprise me, eh? of course. Eh? 
Imagine next year midfield uh, Rabiot, Pogba, Locatelli. Uh, beh, I... I would, I w I'm not 100% sure, because Pogba, we know that uh, in a 4-3-3 or a three-man midfield, uh, he's playing better on the left side of the field where Rabiot is playing, um, even if Pogba can play also on the right, but I would more see a Pogba, Locatelli, McKenny. I, I really, I, I was, last year I was surprised about uh, McKenny because I didn't know him, Um but he had his ups and downs, McKenny. I'm sure that this season I'm expecting a big season of McKenny with a lot of goals, with a lot of goals. I'm expecting a lot. Um, after the game of tomorrow, I will ask you to be, start to think about it. Who do you think will score the first goal of Juve in Serie A? Uh, and I would not be surprised if it will be McKenny, guys. You can already answer now if you want to. Huh? Uh, who will be the first goal? Ah, no, no. What am I saying? McKenny. McKenny will be suspended. Mamma mia. I was already saying stupid things. Uh, no, it will not be McKenny. So then it will be Ronaldo. But uh, the first game of McKenny, you will see he will score. McKenny scored the first game that he plays. I'm sure. I'm sure about it. Uh, Chiesa for sure for a line at bus. So a known goal. It happened that one day. I, there was a season where the first goal of you was a known goal. I remember. Not in our goal. Eh? In, in the other goal. So it was goal for us. Eh? So let me check a bit who you are thinking that will score the first game in Serie A. So it will not be McKenny because he can't play. Giacomo is in Chiesa. Dybala for Timothy. Chiesa. We have two Chiesas. One, uh, one Dybala. A known goal we already said. Um, Ramsey can be, huh? I remember one season it was, or I think it was two seasons in a row, it was Kedira, uh, not my favorite player. It's late back, back, go to but yeah, today I didn't want to do a two hours live, a one hour, one shot well, was a nice live already. So, um, um, Ronaldo, then Chiesa, Cristiano, then Chiesa for Alexander, Alexander Alvarado as well. Uh, no, I, I was thinking McKenny, but as he's not playing, maybe Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, 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 and that that would be really great because you know, uh, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I love him when he scores really soon in the game because then he's really mentally relaxed, he's happy, uh, and then he's more free in his mind. You know, you know, he's obsessed by score, uh, scoring goals by the records. So uh, let him score the first goal and then we are really easy. Uh, Bernardeschi first goal. Chiesa for, uh, um, for Mistondelli. Home of Juve saying the league, the best defender, bicycle kick. Uh, bicycle kick. Mamma mia. Okay. De tell me even the minute. Tell me even the minute. Ronaldo, it's karma, la gioia. Pinsoglio with the first goal. Cristiano. Faraoni. Never forget Faraoni. Never forget Faraoni. Uh, Kulusevski, the first goal. Rugani on goal. No, 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 Robin. Do, do, don't, don't put some, uh, uh, some jinx. Don't jinx. Don't jinx. Um, I received some picture. Wait, let me check. Ciao, Aiden. Ciao, Aiden. Uh, by the way, today is the birthday of uh, uh, Michael Filetti. I don't know if he's on the channel. It's also, also the birthday of my great friend uh, uh, Christine Cupo. So we have two friends the birthday today. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, don't be surprised if Bonucci scores a header off a corner. No, I'm never surprised about Bonucci scoring headers. That's true. He scored uh, uh, in the first initial game versus Chievo a few years ago. I think it was season 14-15. Uh, he scored. Ah, a great question from uh, uh, Aman. Who's saying, will Ronaldo remain? Will Ronaldo remain? And that's the last question of the evening. Before I leave, um, will Ronaldo remain at Juve? Because we know that apparently our friend um, Mbappé, 
He doesn't want to stay at Paris Saint-Germain. He doesn't care about uh, Paris Saint-Germain. He wants to leave and apparently uh, sooner than later. He wants to leave now uh, to Real Madrid. Club of his heart, like Lukaku. Hmm. Sorry, guys. Club of the heart of Lukaku as well. Was Chelsea. He wants to leave. So, if he leaves... I don't know if it will happen or not. Maybe Paris Saint-Germain will try another time for Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, if it was one month ago, I would not have been sure that uh, Ronaldo would remain at Juve. Now I think, guys, that uh, it's late. It's really late. We are already the, the 14th of August. Uh, how can Juve replace Ronaldo? Um, I think it's it's late now. Uh, next year is next year. Next year, let's see what will happen next year. But now I think it's a bit too late. Um, uh, Alessandro is saying maybe next year. Probably next year, yeah. everything can happen in life I don't believe that that will happen but uh, it can uh, it can uh, it can happen uh, of course um, guys it's uh, what time ah 120 it's 120 123 by the way uh, tomorrow tomorrow is a big day guys tomorrow is a big day so I give you my formation what I think uh, how we will start the game with what I believe huh? so I tell you Chesney in the goal. De Chilio on the right. De Ligt and Bonucci as central defenders. Alexandro on the left. Danilo as a number six regista. McKenny on the right. Bernardeschi on the left, Ronaldo up left, Morata number nine, and Chiesa on the right. That's what I think. That's what I think will uh, will happen tomorrow to start the game with. Then second half, Dybala will enter. Ramsey will enter instead of Danilo. Danilo probably will uh, have some minutes and will will take the role. Of De Chilio, De Chilio will go on the left. <coughs> then Bonucci will be replaced with uh, uh, Chiellini. Rugani will change with uh, with De Ligt. That's what I think. Uh, I really like the young striker that won the cup for us. What his name again? It starts with the R. What cup? The young striker that won the cup for us. I don't know who you are speaking about, Andre. If someone understand the message of uh, Andre about what cup is speaking, uh, ah, are you speaking about uh, Rafia? If you are speaking about the young Rafia, uh, he didn't won the cup. Huh? He, he qualified us uh, in the four three versus Genoa. He's going on loan to Standard de Liège together with uh, Dauda Peters. Uh, Delic deserved the Euro. Okay. Uh, maybe him, but not uh, not his team. Uh, I really... Yeah, that was the comment. Guys, uh, last question. Ah, it's the Independence Day of Pakistan today. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, and uh, celebrate as much as you can. Uh, Independence Day. I don't know, some people are uh, uh, really attached to these important historical days of their country, some don't care, uh, but uh, for the people that uh, cares about it, absolutely uh, great Independence Day for the people from Pakistan. Uh, why does he trust the De Chilio so much? That's, yeah, that's a good question I want to answer. De Chilio is not a great player, huh? We will not lie, uh, Michael. Uh, 
is not a great player. Hey, Umut is coming from Genk. A good evening or good night, Umut. Hope uh, I, uh, I have some difficulties to switch from English to uh, Dutch, and I speak Dutch nearly every day, eh? uh, as well French, Dutch. But a uh, good uh, evening, Umut. Welcome op de channel. Uh, ik ben super blij dat je er bent. En uh, dank u, dank u. Vergeet niet, maximum of likes. Um, de Shiri is not a great player. We have to be honest. But he is a reliable player. That can play on the left. That can play on the right. Um, that actually do the job. He does the job. Where where you put him, he does the job without doing crazy. But it's no, it's like uh, the the student that he's doing what you are asking him to do. Not more, not less. You ask him to stay there, he stays there. On the left, he stays on the left. On the right, he stays on the right. The problem at Juventus when he was at Juventus is that. Um, First of all, he was not really liked by the fans, but also he was a lot of time injured and he was never consistent in uh, uh, his playing time. So, he's not a starter, huh? he's not a starter, of course. So, let's see. And why, why Allegri is loving him so much? It's because um, because he's a worker. He works hard. He doesn't complain. He's trying to do the best he can. Being conscious that he's not a phenomenon. Do I believe a lot in uh, De Ciglio? No. Uh, if I could sell him, I would probably sell him. But I'm not a De Ciglio out. I prefer De Ciglio a lot more than uh, Pellegrini. I never trusted uh, and liked uh, Pellegrini as a player. The man, I don't care. He's a beautiful man. Uh, but uh, no, Pellegrini for me is not the Juve player, and they are proving it again. Eh? Whoever coach him, uh, Pirlo or uh, uh, Allegri, Paratici or Cherubini, they are they are not tr giving him the trust to play as a starter in, at Juve. Um, And also, great Independence Day for Jamaica on the 6th of August. Hey, I was on holiday, it's true. It's true, Andre. Young is saying Ronaldo the GOAT. They say he is a good in training session when games, uh, when games he flops. And, uh, hopefully he can uh, change that this season, uh, uh, Mohamed, hopefully. And that's the last question, and then uh, uh, and then I really close, guys. Uh, what are my expectations? I'm a Juve fan, guys. I'm a Juve fan, so I'm used to have that. No, here, I'm. It's always a problem. Um, I'm used to have that small badge here on uh, on the shirt, and this year we will not have that badge on the shirt. So my expectation is that uh, we we go and we win the Serie A. That's one. And then, uh, why Serie A? Because Serie A, I already told it so many times, it's 38 games. The best win. Because you can have injuries, you can have uh, suspensions, you can have red cards, yellow cards, you can have a VR that is checked, not checked, penalty against, penalty for. But in 38 games, it should level itself. Then sometimes some have a bit more favors, then other has a bit more favors, but it should level itself a bit more. Um, so I expect at the end to win Serie A. The other competition, Supercoppa versus Inter, it's an in or out. Versus Inter, I always want to win, always. Uh, but it's an in or out game, a final, so everything can happen, but I want to win it. Coppa Italia, it will be a different Coppa Italia this year. <laughs> I want to win it. Uh, because I'm a Juve fan and I'm used to, to, tr to start a competition and to have the right to dream that we can win it. 
But will it happen? I'm not sure. And then if we speak about Champions League, uh, I always told you that Champions League is a wish. It's a wish and it's an extremely difficult competition. Uh, I expect some problems in the Champions League with some uh, um, strange referee decisions this year. But um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if we will win. On paper, we don't have the obligation to win it because there are some teams that reforms uh, force themselves, like, uh, for example, Chelsea. They are the winner of the Champions League and they were missing a number nine because Timo Werner uh, is never scoring. So now they took a number nine, like Lukaku. So that means that they already won it and now they are super favorite to win it. You have a Paris Saint-Germain, let's see the cohesion of the team, but on paper they are a stratospheric team. Bayern Munich always a big team, difficult team. They have a new trainer, pay attention, because today they played, by the way, um, they played, how many did they do? Because I know that there were some really strange uh, referee decisions today eh, for Bayern Munich. They did 1-1 one, one versus uh, Munchen Gladbach, and I know that there were some two penalties not given to Gladbach. Uh, he has to work on his defense, Nagelmann. And... Uh, but football is football. Guys, I will explain you a really small example, a really easy example, Arsenal. And then you will tell me, yes, but it is Arsenal. Again, today they lost 2-0 versus Brentford. It's a team, I think they didn't win in the first division uh, since 74 years. 74 years absence of first division. They have... Players I never heard about in my life, ever. And today they go, they win 2-0 versus Arsenal, guys, in their home. Yes, Arsenal, they bought a player for 58 million euro. Uh, ben White, central defender, at a certain moment I saw uh, the guy from, uh, from Brentford dribbling, fooling him as crazy. And that's why I tell you, football is still football, guys. At the end, everything can happen. Look at uh, uh, Arsenal with the players they have. They have a Saka, they have like a Z, they have that new player, Ben White, they have a, a trainer, Arteta. Uh, they go, they play, they lose 2 0 versus Brentford. I was thinking it was a, a store where you buy the card, you know, the Ford. But it was a team, actually. They won. They were super happy. So football at the end, it's on the field. And that's why I tell you, uh, my expectations are that uh, we are fighting for uh, from every ball. But it's true, like Munzamil uh, Ahmad uh, is saying money is destroying football. Uh, no, yes and no. No, money is not destroying football because you need money uh, and a lot of money because it's a business at the end. But uh, it is destroying football when you have uh, uh, unfair rules and where uh, a few teams or a specific league uh, is unbalanced with uh, the rest. Then I always believe in meritocracy. Okay, What does that mean, meritocracy, if you deserve something? If you work hard, uh, my theory is if you work harder than another one, why don't you deserve more chances than another one? If you work better and smarter, why don't you deserve better? Um, a Juventus, for example, they deserve better than uh, no, uh, Verona. Why? Because in their history, they worked better, they were harder, they, they were s smarter, and so on and so on. What I don't like is strange rules like in that are not really compliant, okay? Because Juventus has no external help or support. Uh, Paris Saint Germain has. Uh, Manchester City, they have. Chelsea, they have. Because there it's actually the property that is actually injecting money through really strange sponsorships and so on and so on. 
where it becomes really unfair. Uh, today I was reading that Seferin was thinking about a plan to put a salary cap of 70%. What does that mean? That your total entries, 70% of what you actually expend can be for salaries, okay? And the teams that are not respecting that, it's a luxury tax. That means that they are having to pay a tax because uh, they overspent and they are over that salary cap. But teams like Paris Saint-Germain, Manchester City, Chelsea, they don't care. They don't care about paying a luxury tax. They will even be happy if you really want to punish them, you punish them like you did in the past for AC Milan, that you are doing now with Spezia. You ban them from official competitions, you block their transfer market, and so on and so on. If you do that, uh, then these teams are scared and they pay attention. If, if you say to a rich, and that's a bit the unfair thing, eh? if, if you drive with your car and you burn the limit of a, 100 km per hour with your car and you have no job and you have, I don't know, 100 euro to pay, how will you pay this money? But if a rich guy is doing it and he earns, I don't know, 1 million a month, what is 100 euro? It's nothing, it's a joke. So tomorrow, if he needs to drive a bit faster, he will do it again, while someone who is poor, who doesn't have the money, he will pay attention, he will pay double attention. So, that's why, uh, uh, yes, the unfair, strange rules are destroying football, also because if we look at competitions like Europe, uh, UEFA is taking nearly everything in terms of money, and they are not distributing them to the team equally. Mm. problem so it's not the money that destroys um, the football it's uh, the strange rules are not respecting the rules that are destroying football the list is amazing we should be grateful to have him I agree ah hey, hey, Mohammed is giving actually the best comment and the fines are going to UEFA uh, it, it's true, uh, the fines are going to UEFA, that's even the more funny thing, because uh, uh, we were criticizing the fact that they are already having too much money, and they are not distributing equally with the team, and that one of the reasons why Super League wants to be created, now UEFA is saying, you know what, uh, what we do is we put a salary cap. If you're over it, we don't ban you. Because if they ban, they have to ban City. They have to ban Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, but instead, they are saying, you know what? If you do it, you pay a fee, a fine. And, and that money will go to UEFA. So they will even be even more richer with uh, uh, the rich teams. And then uh, Paris Saint-Germain will be really happy to overspend and to have 100%, 110, 120% of the salary cap. Uh, and paying that, fi that fine and that fee to, uh, uh, to UEFA. And everyone is happy. And, uh, and then you are destroying football. Guys. Um. Grazie, Mohamed. From Pisano, Toronto. Ciao, buddy. I like uh, these uh, late night uh, shows, really. Great analyst. But it's, uh, it is what it is for Mario. That is what I'm seeing here. Cristiano Ronaldo, what I think is that he will go. Next year, Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, wait, I lost your comment. Uh, next year, Paris Saint-Germain goes not by players. Uh, Beppe, what do you think? Yeah, I think he will go to Paris Saint-Germain uh, next year. But there is the possibility. But, you know, I will not be angry or uh, I will enjoy at max Cristiano Ronaldo this year, 100%. Uh, because he's a Juve player uh, and he will always be part of history, then you never know what happens. Uh, but we made an agreement for four years, he will play his four years and then he's free to do whatever he wants. You know, I, I have to admit as well, I wanted to see, I knew it was not possible, guys, but I would have loved to see 
uh, Messi one year together with uh, Ronaldo at Juve would have been really beautiful, to be honest. Uh, if he can do it, he can go to Paris Saint-Germain. Why not? Ciao, Lucas. It's a long time ago. Grazie. Thank you for the donation. Why, when I was about to go to sleep, because when uh, uh, I'm tired, I'm, I'm not even able to speak correctly. I make uh, even more mistakes with English. Uh, at the moment, I'm the Brazilian Juventino with more hope in the world. We will be champion of all this season, fino alla fine. Lucas, I love, I love your message uh, because that that's what I love in the beginning of the season. Then everything can happen, eh? good things, bad things. But at least let's start in the starting blocks, thinking that we will compete to win everything. Then pay attention, Lucas, because if your wishes becomes an obsession and then a reason for uh, being depressed all season and destroy uh, and humiliate and be angry versus Juventus, then probably your expectations were exaggerated. I love the positivity because I am like, like you. I start every year thinking that we can go as far as possible and try to win everything. Uh, because I'm also still a kid and that's the beauty of football that you are, have the right to dream because you are a kid if it doesn't happen I'm sad I'm really sad but I, I try to understand why and, um, and I support but I'm happy to see also people that are still believing uh, uh, in winning everything uh, Guys, I finish tomorrow, and, and then I finish tomorrow, big day. I will be, and I want to see you guys on the Twitch of Juventus, because I will be there. We'll do three-hour lives tomorrow. We'll do one-hour pre-game on the Juventus Twitch, me and my friend Marco. Uh, and uh, we will have also an insider that will be at the Juventus Stadium. And he will show us some things that you are not able to see anywhere because he will be there on the field before the game showing us some, uh, uh, in, uh, some inside uh, videos uh, because it will be live uh, one hour before the game. And then we will do a match reaction, the first match reaction on the Juventus Twitch channel, Marco and myself. So it will be a watch along on the channel. Uh, I'm really curious because I never did it on the Twitch channel. So I'm really curious. So... 2-0 for Juve versus Atalanta. De Ligt and Cristiano Ronaldo will score. It's the prediction of home of Juve. Uh, I would be happy. I don't know. I don't know if we will win tomorrow. I hope. But tomorrow I want to see beautiful things. Your Twitch channel name? No, no, uh, Muzamila. I am on the. I am the host of the Juventus official Juventus Twitch channel. So you go on Twitch. You type Juventus. And that's the channel. It's Juventus, the official one. Um, two one for Atalanta. I think we will see a bit more goals. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Guys, time to say hello. Ciao, James. Ciao, uh, Izzy Tizzy. Ciao, Anugia Nugget. Oh, oh, Nugget is there back. That's a long time ago. I didn't read the name. He changed it. He kept some uh, parts of it. But this time and this season, it is Nugget, the Hamster, Forza Juve, Reno 4K, Shrek. Buonanotte, Ryan. Uh, buonanotte, Lord Halister. Home of Juve, Muzamil. Home of Juve again. George, who do we have? BC Artax, home of Juve. Mohamed El Chahali, that was with us in the live today with a really great and nice contribution. Uh, uh, I'm planning to do some videos also with uh, Romeo Agresti soon. This, this summer, I didn't invite too much of Mercato specialists because I didn't want to... Uh, repeat again what has been said everywhere and speaking again about uh, i didn't want to make people some depressed but uh uh but i want to do something you know what you asked to mo about the predictions uh, uh of seria i want to i want to try to do it with romeo agresti if not him we will do it with someone else ciao ricardo from australia uh michael thank you for being there Euro Football News, Dario, always there. Grazie a tutte, buonanotte, forza Juve, ciao.